pickup trucks. Now these days, regardless of where you live, what you do and where you travel to, you're more than likely going to see some form of pickup truck or a multitude of trucks on the road going about their daily business. Now the pickup truck itself was first invented by German engineer Gottlieb Daimler in 1896. A few years later than that, and the first American pickup appeared on the scene at pretty much the same time as the car. However, the American pickups of the time were all homemade. Fast forward to 1957, when Ford introduced and launched the first ever Ford Ranchero, which was a car-derived pickup truck. Now, that ran on a production run until 1979, and the majority of the cars, or all of the cars, were all based on Ford's saloons, compacts, and full-size sedans of the time. Today, you find me sitting in my 1975 Ford Ranchero, which is based on the 1975 Ford Torino. Now, you may know the name Torino better as it's more associated with a certain red car with that white stripe running down the side from the TV series and movies Starsky and Hutch. And as we're at that time of year when the weather gets drier and it starts to warm up a little bit, it's time to wake it up for the first time this year. Come on. Now, I imported this from the Netherlands three years ago in 2020. And uh, it's been used a couple of times. There are some work it needs to do and I have no history on it. So I've got no idea when it's been serviced, whether it's been run hard or that's just been used normally or even if it stood around a lot when it was over there in the Netherlands and in the USA before that. So one of the things we're going to do today is check all the fluids, top up what needs doing and then we're going to go from there and see if we can get the car started. Now it is actually a 5.7, uh, it's a Ford 351 Cleveland with a I believe it's a C4 automatic gearbox on the back of it. So we just pulled the dipstick out for the oil and as you can see it's a little low on oil so we'll get some oil into it. All right, so that's the oil topped up. It's slightly over the line, but that's nothing to worry about. So I'll get that back in. Now looking at the, uh, the automatic transmission fluid, it looks there as though there's far too much in there. But when we read the instructions on the dipstick, which you can just see there, I think, it actually says, don't add if the fluid level is between the arrows. And obviously we're way above the arrows, but it also says, like most automatics, check when hot, idling, and in park. Now, the last time I used the truck, it was problematic in changing gear and it seemed to overheat a little bit in the gearbox. So I, when I checked it when I got home, while it was still hot and running and it was low on fluid. So we'll see when Garrett started first and then obviously once it's running and we'll get up to the temperature, we'll put some more fluid in and see if we can get it up to where it should be. So there's just the, uh, the water to check now and then we'll get everything connected up, see if we can get it started up for the first time this year. All right, so I'm just taking the cap off. there's plenty of fluid in there so that's got more than enough anti freeze in or exactly enough anti freeze in so we'll not, uh, we'll not worry too much about that all right then let's give it a go see if it'll start hopefully there's enough power in the battery never a tick over warm up get the temperature and i'll check the fluid in the gearbox and top that up I don't know if you can notice on camera or not, but looking down there at the rev counter, it's actually ticking over at about 500, 550 thereabouts. Now this being an automatic, it should tick over between 800 and 900 revs. So it looks like the idle needs bringing up, but obviously I want it to get up to temperature before we do anything with that. Now while that's warming up, just check a few things on it. that indicator's working at the back. That one's working as well. Yeah, front one's working on that side. That one's working as well. We've also got tail lights working. One side light working, one not. That's how going to be a bulb or the wiring. So that headlight's on. That headlight's on. And both the high beams are working as well. 
the only light we've got out, that side right there to look at. That one there doesn't appear to be on. That one's lit. That one's lit. And that one up there is lit as well. And you can see the idle fluctuating there, hanging up around about 550, 600. So that does need adjusting. And if we go look at the other gauges, the battery's charging, so that's perfect. Obviously the clock doesn't work, but then what clock does work? We're starting to get a bit of temperature into it, so it's starting to warm up a bit. Oil pressure, I'm not sure the oil pressure gauge works or not, although it has moved from being right at the bottom. And obviously we've got just under half a tank of fuel, but I don't know how reliable that, uh, that fuel gauge is. But everything seems to be going well, all the lights work, horn works. So now it's just a case of letting it warm up, get rid of temperature, we'll get the air filter off, do some adjustments to the uh, the idle, and we'll check the transmission fluid, make sure that's topped up as well. Right, now, going to the temperature gauge, we're just about up to temperature, check the radiator, the radiator's warm, hot on one side, warm on the other, both hoses are hot, thermostat's obviously opened, car's running great, so what we'll do is, we'll check the, uh, we'll run through the gearbox and check on the level of the transmission fluid. Now in an automatic to do that, you need your foot firmly on the brake and you need to go through all the gears one at a time, just for a few seconds, then back up into park, leave it idling, pull the dipstick and check the fluid. Let's see if we can do that. So, foot on the brake, into reverse, that's in reverse, and then into neutral. Down into drive. Oh, and we're stalled. Right, let's try that again then. Right, try my foot on the accelerator, hold it as well, and we'll try that again. So we're in park, down into reverse, into neutral, down into drive. into second and then down into first back up to second back into drive back into neutral into reverse feel that going into gear and then up into park again foot off the brake And we'll leave that idling, we'll go and pull the dipstick. Now as you can see, we're not really registering anything on the dipstick. So we'll shut that off, get some more fluid in it. Now on this gearbox, you fill the transmission fluid up down there through the dipstick tube. So where you go to check your fluid level is also where you fill it. As you can appreciate, that's a really, really far long way back in the engine. These manufacturers don't believe in making life easy, do they? So, in order to make it easier to get fluid in without going all over the back of the engine, I have a funnel with a bit of rubber pipe attached. So let's see if we can get that in place, and then we'll get some fluid, put some more fluid in the gearbox. Now in an automatic, you don't want to be overfilling the gearbox. So because I don't have how much it takes to hand, I've just put some into a jug, and that's how much I'm putting in at the minute. So I can get you set up so you can see it, going down the funnel. Now in theory, I shouldn't spill any of this. Hopefully there's no little holes in the, in the pipe I'm using. It all looks like it's going in. Right, 
I might try a small amount more and then we'll fry it up, do the process again, and see if it's got enough in it. So I'll put a little bit less in this time. Yeah, I see I'm doing an overfill it. to work its way down the tube into the gearbox. I'm going to start the truck again, check the level once more, see how much is in there. Right, that should be all right sitting there. Now if you can see that on camera, we've got liquid or fluid right up to the maximum marrow. That's just about perfect, that is. Good guess. Right, see so if we can get the idle turned up. And hopefully you can hear me over this. We've got the, the idle adjustment. So we've just got to turn in a bit of move. So if you have an increase. Turn in the hall, so jump in the top, see what that's done in the idle. That's better. That looks as though it's about 750, 800. See what happens when I put it in gear. And that drops down to about 550. We'll maybe just give that another half turn. See what that looks like. Right, now that's ticking over. It's hard to see on camera, but it's about 900, 850, 900, a little bit of fluctuation. It does seem a bit more responsive now. And if we stick it in the gear, that's dropping to about 550 or 600. And it doesn't want to stall out. I'm going to go with that for now. See what it sounds like from the back. Yeah, that sounds a bit better. Good enough for me. Also, I've noticed you're going to change them a little bit. See that? Now, I don't know if you could hear me properly on that one, but when you rev the engine, I don't know if it'll do it now. Yep, there it is. So there's a small fuel leak coming from the pump diaphragm on the carburetor, which is this bit here. So we're not going anywhere in this for the moment, not until I get a new gasket to go in there, because obviously the last thing we want is petrol leaking on it with a hot manifold. Oh, it's never ending. Never mind. Well, that's a bit of a letdown, guys. I was hoping to be able to use the Ranchero at some point this weekend, as a short. I'm booked into where I'd like to go to. So it looks like I'm going to have to do some work now. Get some orders in, get some parts for the carburetor and get that running properly. Yeah, well, no mind. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll leave a playlist up here of the stuff I've done in the Ranchero uh, so far. So you can enjoy that. Thanks. Bye for now.